Hi, welcome to American Dream Vacations. My name is Kendall and I'll be going over the orientation for unit 1831. First, we're going to start with our keys. Alright, you got about five or six keys on here. It's very important to know exactly where they all go. Here's your Ford engine key. You have two door keys, one round and one not so round. The round one goes here and the other larger one is your deadbolt. Okay. You have two other keys. One is for the fuel cap on the other side. And then the round silver one that says 751 on it is going to be for all your compartments. All right. Now, this compartment key is universal to most RVs, so be careful what you put inside your, inside your compartments because other people will have the same key. Okay. So, what we'll do is we'll start over here. First, we have your awning is out already, but once you uh, get it out, if you want to lock these arms, you go ahead and lock the arms down and that'll keep the, arm, the, the awning from moving up and down. Uh, if the wind picks up to say more than 10 miles an hour, if it rains really hard, uh, please put it away because these things are not made of heavy duty materials. They're very lightweight and they're easy to break. Uh, and if they break, they're pretty expensive to replace. So just be very careful. Don't go to sleep with it out um, and take every opportunity to protect your investment. All right, here we have our TV. The TV door folds down you have a radio right there this is a 12 volt TV so you do not have to have power uh, on your generator on or the uh, or plugged into a campsite you can just turn this TV on as well as the one inside they're both 12 volt TVs we also have down here our propane here's your gauge right here and this is how you turn off the propane there's no need to turn off propane off unless there's an emergency uh, if you go take this to a U-Haul to get it filled up then they're going to take this cap off right here, fill it up, and uh, just make sure that if they did close it, you open it back up. If you use all of the propane in here, that's fine. You don't have to bring it back with any more in it, but if you do need more, it's going to be at your cost. Okay? You have electrical outlets right here. These outlets are only activated when the generator is on or when you are plugged in at a campsite. Otherwise, they're dead. This little hook right here holds the back of the door. You open the door, latches, and it keeps the door from swinging back and forth. There's a screen door inside that you can keep the bugs out, so you can use a screen door. Here you have storage, more storage here. This is the back of the furnace. Of course, it gets hot, so be very careful what you lay over here. This is the back of the refrigerator. You don't need to access this for any reason. Here we have more storage. If for some reason the water pump starts acting up, it's also inside this compartment it's behind that door right there. Okay, there's also a water filter in there. You really don't need to access either one of those. It's just FYI. In here you have storage. This is a pass-through storage. Okay, so you can get large picnic tables, uh, chairs, maybe not luggage, unless it's really small. The other side, the compartment door is a little bit bigger so you can get larger objects in there. You have your backup camera and you also have your ladder. Going up on top of the RV is for maintenance only. You guys that do NASCAR and these other uh, sporting events where you need a high view, do not go on the roof. There's, uh, there's, it's not safe up there and you could step easily on one of the, the vents or uh, air conditioners up there and cause some damage. Here's the other side of that pass through storage right here. Pretty deep. Not real big, but you can put some luggage in here. This will take probably three full-size pieces of luggage. Here we have our 30 amp power. Now we're plugged in on to our house power here on the other side, and it's a three-prong like this. Okay, this is 30 amp service. So when you go into wherever you're going, make sure you have 30 amp service if you want to have electricity. If they have 50 amp service, you'll need a 50 to 30 amp adapter and just ask us for one of those and we'll provide one of those with you, all right? This is your 15 amp side. So if you wanna go home and charge your batteries up because you're not leaving till tomorrow, you plug this on the end of this cord here and then you plug this side into an extension cord and plug it in at the house. Now, when you use this side, you can't run in the air, you cannot run the air conditioner on the roof. You can run everything inside, all the appliances, the TVs, uh, charge up your batteries, keep your fridge cold, all off this one here, but you cannot run the air conditioner. All 
right? So this will be provided with you also. That will be part of the checklist and that's an accountable item. Here you have your fresh water fill. Uh, you have about 40 gallons of fresh water. It goes pretty quick depending on how you use it. But all you do is you simply take your water hose and you drop it in there and fill it up until it overflows. Once it overflows, you put your cap on and you are done. If you go into a campsite, uh, mom, dad's house, wherever it is, and they have a water source, you can take the water hose that people provide you with and you can just screw it into here. And it'll give you a straight shot of water to all your water facilities. Okay, and it'll bypass the fresh water tank. They're, they're separate, but they end up in the same place, which is your faucets. Okay, so this one here is a straight shot to all of your faucets. This one here goes to the tank and the water is pulled out by way of that water pump that we pointed out on the other side. Here you have an outside shower. So in case you're at the beach or you get your hands dirty, uh, with the next step we're going to talk about, you can always wash your hands off. And there's a lid here. You can button all this up and close this with that 751 key. Sewer flusher. This is for your toilet. So typically when you're going to put your RV in long-term storage or storage for maybe a couple of weeks, you can get an extra flush out of that uh, sewage tank that's underneath the RV. And what you would do is you would just take your water hose, you put it on here, you turn it on, and it showers the inside of the uh, black tank, and then you can drain it all out. It just gives it an extra shower. But if you don't need to do that, you don't necessarily need to do that. But that's something that we will do once you bring it back. Okay. Here we have the water hose that we're going to provide you with. This is a water regulator. This water regulator must stay on the hose at all times. It doesn't matter if you're using the city water connection or if you're just filling it up. Always leave this on and make sure you bring this back. Okay. What it does is it reduces the water pressure from city water pressure to something that's allowable for these plastic lines in here uh, to be safe to let that water flow through it. Otherwise, you may bust a line. If you bust a line, then you're going to have big problems. So make sure you keep that on there. Okay. So you have a little storage space here. And then you have your sewage. You have two valves. The black valve, which is with your toilet, and the gray valve, which is for your sink and shower water. So here's the hose that we're going to provide you with. You can run this up through here. And what you're going to do is you're going to take this cap off, like so. You're going to take this, put it on, twist and lock into place. And the other end, with all these different uh, threaded pieces, you have three different threads, and then you have one which just slides on. Whichever one works with your campsite is going to automatically go to it. Okay? So once you get it all hooked up, then you're going to pull the black line first, which is going to allow all that sewage to come out. Okay, once it's all drained, then you pull your gray line, which is your sink and shower water, which has soap in it. It's going to come behind it and rinse all that sewage out of your line. Don't do it backwards, or you're going to have to use this shower above my head to clean up your huge mess. Okay? That is pretty much it here. Once you're done, you take your lines back off, put, rinse your hose out if you need to, put your hose back in here, button it back up, and close her all down. Your fuel is here, regular unleaded gas, and you have the fuel key. Make sure you use that and lock it up so people don't steal your gas. We have storage compartment here. You have this coax, so if you go to a campsite, you can use that, and the connection is right underneath the power cable right here we just plug it into right here okay here in this unit is uh, unique because it has a tankless water heater tankless water heater is just like you expect it to be you turn it on within 20 seconds or so you should get hot water okay the switch is inside where you turn it on and there's a thermostat for how hot you want the water to be the reason we have this cover off is because about one in every uh, 15 rentals someone may trip the breaker on it. It's just a little reset button in here and it sits right here It's just a little white push button If you hear that click if you push it and you hear it click then that was the problem and everything should work fine Other than that if it stops working, please give us a call and we'll try to assist you. All right the door goes on from the bottom 
And this little wing nut right here is what you'll put on once it pushes through. All right, so you take that off, of course, put it on, put the wing nut back on. Over here we have more storage, and then we have our generator. Our generator is what's gonna provide your 120 volts of electricity inside. If you wanna run your rooftop air conditioner, you have to have the generator going while you're driving down the street. So in the middle of summer, you got the dash air that's gonna run off the engine, and then your roof air. Uh, if you want that on, you have to turn the generator on, okay? And it's pretty simple. There's a switch inside, which we'll go over, but all of these generators are built with the switch on the outside. For demonstration purposes, I'm just gonna use the one outside. So basically, we're gonna use the stop prime, and we're gonna hold that button until the red light comes on. Once the red light is on, we know that our engine is primed, and then our start button, we're gonna hold the start. You're gonna do all that from the inside, but again, I just demonstrated it from here. There's a circuit breaker switch. It's just a little toggle switch sitting right in here. That's the off and on, okay? It's right here. That's a circuit breaker, so if you're doing some troubleshooting because the generator's not working, maybe the generator is on, but uh, you're not getting any power inside, you can turn that off and turn it back on. If you need to check the oil, oil here is 1540. If for some reason that you're running low, 1540, you can add some more there. If you're going into the mountains, like you're going to Colorado, and you know that the altitude is changing, you can always adjust this dial. It's for altitude, but once you come back out of the mountains, you need to readjust it back to sea level, which is zero. All right. If the generator starts to give you any issues, uh, there's a few things you can do that we're going to recommend if you call us. First is just a visual inspection. Does anything look wrong? Uh, does any of your tubing, have, has it popped off? Is there leaking? Uh, any of these wires or anything look wrong? Do a visual inspection. There's a filter behind here, there's a wing nut, and then there's another wing nut inside there. Um, you can check all that stuff to give yourself uh, the best opportunity to get this thing running again. And also, when your engine fuel runs down to quarter tank, it's automatically going to stop the siphon to this generator. So maybe it stopped because you ran low on gas. So before you get to where you're going, if you're not going to be at a campsite, make sure you fill up. Otherwise, the generator is going to just stop running and you're not going to know why. And finally, we have our battery boost button, which is this little button on the bottom of the seat there. It looks like a battery. And what that does is, let's say you got to where you're going and you had the radio running all day or you accidentally left your lights on, you have the engine battery that just died. Well, you also have a house battery that all your TVs are running off of, all your 12 volt lights, they're running off that also. If you push that button and crank the engine, you'll get a jump from the house battery to the engine battery and it should get you going, all right? Uh, if it doesn't work, it means your house battery is low, possibly plug it back into the campsite or turn your generator on, maybe give it 10 minutes and then try it again. Instead of having to get a jump, you have that as an option. If that doesn't work, then you're going to have to get a jump. All right? That should cover everything on the outside of Unit 1831. All right, let's go inside.